Um, just kind of what was the, just to start out, what was kind of the thought process behind um, the, the trade and letting Rondo go and bringing in Lou? Well, we certainly didn't go into to the week um, with uh, plans of, of trading, um, though. Um, but as, you know, dialogue, you know, took place throughout the course of the week, um, you know, we, we just, we felt like we were getting a, a pretty good deal um, there. Uh, obviously, we were very appreciative of everything Rondo gave us uh, while he was here, and we were certainly comfortable moving forward with him. But you know, being able to you know pick up uh, a couple future draft picks and being able to get a player back the quality um, that we were able to um, in Lou, um, you know, it just it kind of made sense for us. You know, one of the things that you know, we're all aware of is when Trey's gone to the bench, you know, we, we've struggled a little bit offensively. Um, and so, you know, the hope is bringing in Will, as, as everyone knows, he's one of, if not the best bench scorer in the history of the league, you know, three times, six man of the year. So, you know, we felt like, you know, that addressed, it, addressed one of the things that um, we saw that well, we could we could fix moving forward. And then, you know, you know, the icing on the cake, so to speak, was the uh, draft assets moving forward. Chris Kirshner. Um, what would you say your main objective was going into the trade deadline? You know, honestly, going into it, and then you know, this is what I was ter- telling everybody, you know, around the league, we, we we didn't we didn't really want to go in there and mess things up. You know, obviously the teams um, getting healthy have been playing better. Um, you know, sometimes you know the best moves you make are the ones you don't do. Um, so we, you know, if we had this, had the opportunity to um, address, you know, the the bench a little bit, scoring punch, you know, we were going to do it, and then obviously, you know, that played out for us. Um, and then also, like I said, you know, getting the the future assets, um, you know, you can never go wrong um, collecting those. Terrell Thomas. Good afternoon, Travis. Uh, what what is your expectation now? And and adding Lou Williams, as you mentioned, uh, someone who can get the ball in the basket uh, at a high level. What is your expectations, and and what did you see in him to bring him into this roster? Well, I think just as you said, um, you know where we've kind of struggled is you know those times when Trey's been off the floor. So having somebody that can come on the floor that you know can run pick and roll and score and pick and roll, I think is going to be a big boost for us. Um, you know, as far as, you know, what, what we're hoping for, you know, as I said, you know, way back in the preseason uh, with you guys, you know, our main objective this year was to have games count uh, the last month of the season. And, you know, we, we've put ourselves in that position. So to be able to have our guys, especially our young guys, go out there and play in meaningful games uh, and, you know, hopefully playoff games to have that experience, that, that's what we're hoping for. And, and we feel like we've, we've put ourselves in that position. Um, so we wanted to try to maximize as, as we could. Thank you. Sarah. Um, so just to, to follow up, do you see Lou kind of being that kind of go-to backup point guard that can kind of get the second unit going? And um, also, what are you looking forward to about kind of the leadership that he can bring? I know you're losing a leader in Rondo and kind of a veteran presence, but you're also kind of bringing in someone who could maybe step into those shoes. Yeah, I think the the, one of the nice things about Lou is, you know, he's a combo guard, you know, he can play on the ball, he can play off the ball, um, certainly can run offense. Um, You know, I I personally, you know, I've only spoken to him once last night, so I I don't know him, but a lot of the folks that have worked here um, were here when he was there or when he was here earlier. Um, uh, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with them, but you know, you're, I've never heard anyone have anything negative to say about Lou as a person. Um, I, you know, I, from all of the intel, he's very straightforward in the locker room and, you know, is very black and white and direct about, you know, how he sees things and, and those are positives. So, um, you know, we're excited to add him to the, to the roster. Charles Odom. You, uh, you mentioned your team uh, getting healthy and playing better. Um, how much did these last 10 games factor into your um, trade deadline decisions, including 
how receptive you might have been to interest in John Collins? Uh, yeah, there's certainly um, no doubt, you know, playing better, you don't, you don't feel the need to shake it up as much, um, you know, as to John, um, you know, there's been a, a ton of speculation out there um, all along about John since, the, you know, the negotiations didn't get finalized uh, last year on his extension. But, you know, we've, we've been steadfast that, you know, we view John as a big part of our team, a big part of our franchise. And, um, you know, we, we like all, all our players, you know, we, we do our due diligence um, to see what their value is. But I don't think that you've ever heard myself or anybody else in the Hawks organization say that we don't have uh, great, great place break value on John. Um, we do. Um, so uh, we've never had any serious conversations with any team about, um, you know, moving him this year. Chris. Um, obviously, without Rondo, there's a hole at backup point guard. What is the plan there now? Do you see Lou being in that spot, or, or is it someone else on the roster going to be the primary backup? No, I think Lou uh, can play there. Um, you know, I think you'll see a, a lot of um, um, a lot of instances where you know he'll be out there with uh, Bogey or Kevin, and you know those guys all have the ability. Um, but I think Lou kind of has that right now. Um, you know, I haven't. Last night, talking with Coach, you know, I'm not sure which way they're going to go tonight since, um, you know, Lou won't be available tonight. Um, you know, he's got to go through the all the paperwork that we have to do to finalize the trade. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, he'll probably have the, the vast majority of those duties. But ultimately, that's, you know, Coach Max call, too. Terrell. Uh, Travis, you kind of answered my question uh, a little bit with your statement a moment ago saying that Lou won't be available this evening. Uh, but do you have a timetable on when you believe he will join the team? And uh, do you believe that may be during the West Coast trip? Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think it's going to be during the West Coast trip. Um, you know, one of the tricky things with all the proto COVID protocols we have is, you know, trying to get a, a private flight out of San Antonio last night uh, to get him back um, to California. And then, you know, maintaining all the daily testing requirements, you know, while doing the physical and all the um, clean pathways you have to have in and out of that. So, um, you know, we definitely anticipate that he's going to join us. Um, it's just, you know, what exact game right now, I'm not 100% sure as we work through all this with the league. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Terrence Moore. Travis, are you surprised how well the team has responded to Nate uh, as a head coach, or, or is this something that you expected? Oh, I, I wouldn't say that, that I necessarily expected it. Um, you know, I think, you know, what you've seen our guys is, you know, we win a couple close games early right after uh, Coach Mack took over, and, you know, they, they start to gain confidence. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, one of, the, one of the big things that we've seen from our group is there's, a, you know, a little more confidence um, in their abilities to close out those games. Sarah Spencer. Hey, Travis, I, I know you said you only had, I think kind of one conversation with Lou, but just how did that conversation go? What did you guys kind of chat about? Uh, no, just, you know, telling him that we're excited to have him and, you know, we're going to work forward to, you know, get him to the team uh, as soon as possible. Um, you know, they're, they're not long conversations uh, by any stretch, um, but, you know, that, that was just, that was it. <laughs> Chris. Um, was it at all important to you in, in the Rondo trade to get off his salary in order to have more flexibility this coming off season? Uh, no, not, not at all. That wasn't a factor in this at all. Um, to be honest with you, you know, we're, we're going to be in a situation next year with, with our cap holds that we're not really going to be a space team anyway. So, you know, creating cap space, it wasn't, wasn't a factor in this. Kelly. Oh, maybe Kelly does not have a question. We will go. Oh, sorry, I do. I'm sorry. I muted myself. Travis, you'd think I'd have this down by now, but um, 
I, I know you can't always take hearsay into account, but I think there was a quote by Lou a, a while back saying if he were traded again, he'd consider retirement. Did you ask him about that at all? And and I, I know we'll get the chance to talk to him down the road, but why do you think um, he would have reconsidered in order to come back to Atlanta? Um, you know, I, somebody told me about that, um, so I was aware. Um, you know, listen, I think you know he had been a Clipper uh, for a long time and had a lot of great years as a Clipper. Um, so I, I think there probably was, you know, the thought process of this is my last de destination. Um, certainly, Atlanta being lose home, um, you know, I think that holds a special part uh, place in his heart. Um, but again, you should ask him that. But um, you know. Again, everything I've ever heard about Lou is that he's the ultimate professional. Um, and, you know, unfortunately in the NBA for these guys, um, you know, we, we, you can get traded and you have to have to change teams. Um, but he's been nothing but professional with us um, from um, the jump on this. So appreciate it. Right. Chris. How close are Cam and Chris to returning? Um, so as you know, um, uh, KD is on this trip. Um, he's progressing to play, um, against our guys the first of next week. Uh, I think the plan is Monday, assume everything goes in, in a practice setting. And then assuming all that goes well, um, you know, hopefully sometimes towards the end of this trip, he'll be back. Um, Cam is still in a place where he's just non, non impact. Um, so he, he, he's a ways away, uh, you know, spot shooting and just doing all his rehab. Kevin Taylor. Hi, Travis. Uh, I know you said in the beginning that you didn't want to kind of mess up the roster, but uh, could we be looking at some other moves maybe down the line to kind of bolster the roster, especially from a defensive perspective before the end of the season? Well, so we have a full roster at this time, you know, 15 uh, with our two two ways. So, you know, we'd have to release somebody in order to do that. Um, you know, as far as the, the defense, uh, you know, hopefully uh, once we get Chris back, you know, Chris is, you know, one of the better perimeter defenders in the league. So I guess that would that would bolster our defense a little bit uh, if we get him back on the court. All right, thanks. Michael Thomas. How are you, Travis? Well, thank you. Yes. Um, as a GM, you're always looking to improve this team. You have a steady pull from the team throughout the year. Um, do you ever feel any added pressure um, when the trade deadline is coming up to make a move? No. You know, as I mentioned, um, you know, we went into this deadline really not anticipating doing much of anything. Um, but as, and like I said, as the, as the week progressed, um, you know, this, this deal came along where we felt like we could, um, you know, maybe get a little extra scoring pop off the bench and also, you know, pick up some future assets. Um, so it, it just kind of made sense to us. But it's, as I said, it wasn't something we, we were looking to do. Um, you know, that we're, we're in a place where we, we have a very deep team and we like our team. Um, you know, so it, it wasn't, it wasn't a situation, you know, there've been um, my last year, by way of example, you know, last year we, we made it very clear to everyone that, you know, we had a bunch of expiring contracts and we had a first round draft pick. We were willing to move um, and we needed a center. So we were very aggressive last year to go out and get uh, a center, you know, that turned into Clint. Um, you know, we weren't, we weren't in that situation this year where we felt like we had to be aggressive to go address one particular um, area of need. Sarah. Hey, Travis. Um, so obviously not to jinx anything, but you guys are getting a little healthier and, and now you add Lou. How much do you like the depth you guys have, um, you know, now that you're in the second half and kind of down the stretch of the second half? Yeah, no, I think it's going to be really important. Um, you know, we're, as you guys all know, you know, we're, we're playing games every other day, you know, that it's going to be taxing on all these guys. So having the ability to, you know, maybe rest a guy here or there or play a guy uh, less minutes one game as opposed to the next is going to be real important. And, you know, to prevent little bumps and bruises to turning into to big injuries. So I think that that's, you know, one of the things we set out to do in the beginning of this 
was with this season just being compacted was to have as much depth as possible, um, you know, on top of all the, the COVID stuff, which, you know, knock on wood, we've been able to avoid. Our guys have been doing a great job on all the protocols. Another question from Paul Gant. Travis, were, were you reluctant to move Rondo because of the success he's had in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we were reluctant to, to do it because, you know, we, we valued what he brought to us, you know, both on and off the court. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season, he wasn't quite healthy. You guys know that he kind of battled some nagging injuries and, you um, you know, we just felt like he was starting to get his legs underneath him. Um, so we, we were certainly, you know, hesitant to do that. And, you know, he was, he was, he was the biggest voice in our locker room too. Um, you know, all our guys respected him, you know, he's a two-time NBA champion. Um, so, you know, it, it gave us pause, but, but like I said, you know, bringing in someone like Lou, who, who has a ton of experience as well, and is obviously extremely respected. Um, but, you know, his game is just a little bit different. Um, and we felt like, you know, that little that punch of scoring coming off, you know, could benefit us down the stretch here. Um, and then, as I mentioned, obviously, for about the 15th time, you know, get, getting those picks, those are, those are, those always get me, man. I'm a, I'm a softy when people start throwing picks at me. Got just a few more. Uh, back to Terrence Moore. Uh, Travis, now that you guys are healthy, uh, do you guys, from a management standpoint and an ownership standpoint, have you guys talked between yourselves as to what you expect, how far you expect this team to go in the playoffs? And then I guess the second part would be, how far do you expect this team to go? Well, I, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> you know, as I mentioned, you know, from, from day one, uh, you know, let's, let's have these games at the end of the season be important games. Uh, and, you know, we feel like obviously with a little over two months to go, every game matters. I mean, you guys look at the standings, you know, we, you, you can go from fourth to 11th in about a week with a good week or a bad week. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited to be where we are. We feel like we're positioned well to get into the expanded playoff format. And once we get there, you know, we're just excited that our guys are going to have the ability to experience what the difference is between, you know, regular season basketball and playoff basketball. Two more, uh, Sarah Spencer. Um, Travis, I know you mentioned kind of the scoring pop Lou brings. Uh, but what do you like about his ability to create? I think you touched a little bit on pick and roll earlier. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's a very good pick and roll. I mean, as you guys, you know, just remember, um, you know, last year, one of the most, uh oh, I haven't moved in a while. My lights turned off. <laughs> uh, one of the most dynamic duos in the league the last couple of years has been, uh, you know, Lou and Montrez out in um, LA, you know, with their uh, pick and roll game. Um, you know, that was a big part of their success. So it's obviously, you know, playing with John, playing with Clint, playing with Big O, um, playing with Gallo, you know, Lou and Gallo obviously played together in LA as well. Um, so we, we feel like, you know, he's going to be able to take advantage of those situations, whether it's, you know, getting those up guys open for shots or getting himself obviously open for shots. And one more from Kevin Taylor. All right. Thanks. Uh, Travis, uh, just curious if you talked to uh, coach McMillan first before making the deal. And if so, what were his thoughts? Oh, yeah, obviously, uh, we talked to, uh, talk to the coaches before we make any decision on the roster and certainly take their input and, you know, how they feel about the situation. Um, you know, I think, you know, he, he saw the same things we saw. You know, uh, none of us were looking to, to move Rondo. We, we value what Rondo brought to the team. But, you know, being able to add that, that scoring pop, um, you know, was something that he saw as advantageous as well. All right, thank you. Thank you, Travis. That was our final question. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye.